Welcome back to this week's edition of Eagle Talk News. I'm Skylar McLaughlin. I'm Paige. I'm Mr. Bennett. And you heard him here. We have Mr. Bennett here as a guest today. How are you doing today? Doing well. It's good to hear. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. I'm doing Tired. good. Tired. First yeah. hour. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so I thought it'd be cool to start off with an icebreaker. We haven't done this yet, so I don't know. I just feel like it'd be a fun game to start off with. Perfect. So um, kind of thought of this one on the spot, but if you could get rid of one of your senses, why? You can think about it for a minute. One of my senses. Like five senses. <laughs> Oh man, that is that's rough. This is for a question for all of us too, so I gotta think of that. I'm taking taste. Really? Yeah. Why? So I can just eat like a ton of healthy stuff that I don't usually like Ooh. all the time. You know, that's not that's not a terrible idea. <laughs> and I can still like I wouldn't do smell because sometime like say like you're at your house, it's a gas leak. Yeah. Are you gonna smell that? Like can you even smell gas leaks? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'd be. I might be tempted to go smell though. I don't know. I like food then, too much. Yeah, but then, but the smell. I know. Messes up yeah. With the taste. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I might have to go with taste too because I don't know. I kind of favor my other senses over that one, so. I think I'd go It'd be a little taste. hard to do my job with no hearing. Yeah. That that might be a little tough. Or sight, you can. Sight. Yeah. But hearing for sure. Yeah, it's nice to see things, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not giving up sight or hearing. I'm going smell. You yeah. might have convinced me to change. You might have. All right. Not not smell. You want taste, right? Didn't you go taste? I went not smell. smell. You want smell? What? I thought you went oh, taste. Oh, no, I did oh, go you taste. taste. I did go taste. All right. <laughs> oh, that was, a, that was a... No, yeah, I did go taste. Sudden change there. Right. <laughs> yeah, taste. Get rid of taste. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the music program overall and just marching band. So do you want to start off with the first question? I mean, yeah. So you teach these classes. I took one of them, music appreciation. Yeah. The class was awesome. Oh, I appreciate it. So like, I know being in that class, you play instruments. Yep. So how far does that reach? Like, how many instruments do you play? Do I personally play? Yeah, or know how to play. So, like, going into college into music, my primary instrument was saxophone. Um, okay. But in college, when you go into music, especially music education, you have to you have to take classes and learn how to play far more instruments than that. Some people just do it, like, rudimentary. Some people do it, like, a higher level so that they can, you know, do different things. So I had to take, like, three years of piano, Um, I had to learn how to play every band, orchestra, instrument, vocal music. Um, So I'm pretty decent at the instruments (laughs) like that we play here at Mm -hmm. the high school level. So I can pretty much play any of the instruments that we have at the high school, at like maybe a high school level. Mm -hmm. Some of them better than others. Um, But my main instrument is saxophone. Wow. Gotcha. Yeah, because I remember in that music appreciation class, you just pick up a different instrument and start playing it. And I was like, it was crazy. It was funny because when I started at the high school, I was awful at brass instruments, brass instruments, like trumpet, trombone, yeah. and stuff like that. Just awful. I couldn't, I mean, I, I knew what buttons to push and stuff, but it just sounded awful. And so for like the first three, four years of teaching, that's all I would ever play when I was like helping out with students and stuff. Like I just pick it up. The kids didn't even know I played saxophone. So, because <laughs> that was just the first thing. And now it's like my go-to because it's just really easy to pick yeah. up and, and do something for demonstration. But that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. For sure. What classes are you offering right now? Or not offering? But- so, I mean, of course, we have a lot of, we've had a lot of opportunities in the past, um, and we still have a lot of opportunities. So you can be in band, uh, concert band, or wind ensemble. So concert bands are lower band, wind ensembles are higher band. And we've had students even join in high school who have, like, never been in band before. I think I have three students right now. They're just like, I want to try it. And they... We talk about it. We do a school instrument or whatever, and they and they jump in, um, and that's that's pretty cool to see. Um, concert choirs, our lower choir, and then chamber ensembles, our top choir. So our lower choir um, is a little bit more traditional. We use like backing tracks and piano accompaniment and stuff like that. But our top choir is an all acapella group, and they do 
pretty much more uh, contemporary music, modern music. Um, think it's not pentatonics, but think more to like that pentatonic style of music. Okay. Um, and then those are really easy to jump in. So if you can carry pitch, carry tune, and you just have a good attitude, you can jump in at any time on either of those classes and stuff. So it's really cool because I get to, oh. I get a lot of different students in those classes. You know, I get the opportunity to get like music appreciation is great. Um, you know, when you look at music, traditional music appreciation classes, they end up being more like music history, which is yeah, f- music histories. Very, fine. It's very interesting. Right. Yeah, it's fine. But then there's so many more things that we do. So we've gotten into using a program called Soundtrap, which is owned by Spotify. And it's kind of like a browser based garage band that has a lot of different new functions, which yeah. is pretty cool. And we get into music technology and production and we talk about music as like identity and music as um, uh, like a consumer. Um, so there's a lot of different things that we try to catch in that uh, music appreciation class and of course we offer a marching band which is a credit no credit class um, which means it doesn't affect your GPA but if you pass the class um, in doing it then you can waive your PE credit and you get like a half credit of fine arts oh, uh, okay. yeah that's really cool I think I heard about that that it can like take yeah it's that. a pretty good deal if you're gonna if you're gonna do it anyways to be able to you know, get that check mark and open up your schedule a little bit for something else that you might want to do. Yeah. So how does marching band work? Because I have heard like a lot of, do you like to tell us more about marching band? So marching band is, we have kind of a couple different functions with marching band. It's the same group. They do the same thing. But then we have like the community side of the marching band. The community side of the marching band is like, the parades. So like the first big thing that we do every season is the Memorial Day Parade, which is really important to give back to the community and be part of that. Um, It's one of my favorite activities that we do for, um, you know, the community side of performance. Mm -hmm. Um, But then of course we have like the Homecoming Day Parade, which is, you know, a big part of the school community. And we have um, football games to support all our student athletes. Marching Band also tries to support the cross country team. We go out when we have our home invitation and we play the Star Spangled Banner for them. So oh. any opportunity to just be part of the community, that's that's that aspect of marching band. And then the other aspect is we compete in the state level um, circuit. So we'll go, um, it's kind of like MSHAA. Uh, okay. So you get put in conference uh, divisions and then you go and compete against other schools. Um, and then if you qualify, you get to go to state finals. So um, every year since we've been here, we've qualified for state finals and that's at Ford Field and that's pretty cool experience. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, you get to how go. Do, how yeah. do those competitions work? Like how do you compete? Competitions, so there... um, there's a rubric uh, okay. of like, they evaluate the difficulty of your drill and how you execute it. They, def- they evaluate um, the difficulty of your music and how you execute it. Uh, They, a lot of it is just on the level of your performance. Um, Some of it's creativity of it, but anyways, they're all rubric based and you get scored. There's uh, anywhere from five to seven judges, depending on what point of the season we're at. And they all have a very specific category that they have to evaluate. So one of them might evaluate only marching technique, um, how well they move, how well they execute forms. Uh, one of them might evaluate uh, just our percussion. One of them might evaluate our music, but music only as an ensemble. One of them evaluate and be on the field. There's two field judges that walk around and see what individual students are doing. And okay. they'll evaluate like individual performance. So you get that kind of like big group focus and you also get the individual one. So at any time you could be somebody who impacts the overall score of the ensemble. That's... I didn't know it went that deep. That's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Me either. Just always thought like it was playing an instrument, but really it's. Yeah, I mean, and you don't have to play an instrument. So we have a lot of students who've come in from choir or who haven't been in band or choir at at all. And they'll maybe they have some piano background or they've been in a rock band or they just like music and they want to be in our front ensemble, which is like all percussion based and synth and electronics in the front of the field. Or they just have. Maybe they have some dance background and they want to be in our color guard. We have quite a few students who are not in band or 
require that are just in color guard. And we also have a, a competitive winter guard that is only guard. When, when I say guard, it's like flag work, dance, yeah. saber, rifles. So they get a lot of those experiences there too. So a lot of opportunities for people that have experience and people who don't. Yeah. I did not know it expanded that much. That's really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always just kind of been at, like seen at like a basic level, but the more that you talk about it, it's very like interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to know until you, yeah. you know, because the community typically will only see uh, like a parade or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that's like a homecoming. Oh, yeah, yeah, you see the parade, right? Or you see, uh, yeah, the football game, homecoming. Yeah. Um, and, and those are great, and we love doing those performances and stuff too. But there are so many other things that you know happen behind the scenes, um, mm-hmm. and at these competitions that people just don't always get a chance to see. Yeah. So it really, besides like having a background in maybe an instrument, or whatever, like you said, like a background dancing. What would it like the requirements be to be in like marching band? There are no requirements at all. It's one of the wow. few, acti- it's kind of like cross. Like if you want to do it and you have a good attitude, we're going to find a place for you. That's awesome. Um, so in, in fact, we're starting with our spring rehearsals uh, here in May. We always start in May. We only do once per week. There's no commitment. There's no cost for spring rehearsals. And our primary focus is to start building a team and then um, like kind of like with, with conditioning with a lot of the other sports, you know, off season stuff, yeah. but it's a lot about building that team and then working towards this Memorial day parade. So we get like five rehearsals, um, they're five to eight. We're going to run them like Mondays, the second and the ninth, and then Tuesdays from that point forward. So the 15th, 22nd. Um, so actually that's only four rehearsals and then we have to do the Memorial day parade. So it's, it's pretty much like, let's get up, let's get going kind of deal. And then we'll do the day right after the Memorial Day Parade. Um, And at that point, we're kind of like, all right, we have a parent meeting. Like, you got to start making a decision now. Like, do you want to do the competitive season? You know, make that commitment. And then we uh, will do one mini camp the three days right after school, get out that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And those are just evening things. Um, And then competitive season and starts kind of like when all the other sports do in the summer um so at the very end of july going into august so the season starts in may or it's like a pre it's kind of like a pre-season type thing so it there's no commitment for spring so if you want to just try it out and get to know the people and get into the activity it's perfect show up yeah if you've got i know some people have like they're in track yeah. and so they just can't make one day or they're uh they've got i know we got driver's training going on if you can only make an hour make an hour if you you know there's there's a way to fit people in so we were really accommodating and i love students that do different things i love having student athletes we've every year we have a, a large group we've had football players cross country you know we've golf like we want students to be as involved as they possibly can in high school while they have this part of their friends and their parents um, and juggling their schedules and all the demands that are required on them. I love having the students that are involved. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. awesome. It sounds like it's just like a really positive environment to be in. Like you just come as you are and like you'll make room like very mm-hmm. open. And yeah, absolutely. And that's awesome. That and you gotta, and you gotta be willing to work, but that's like yeah. anything, right? Mm -hmm. And if you want to be good at something, you have to work and you have to make that commitment. But as far as like getting into it, you know, we're going to find a place for you. So does that like go all throughout summer? So once we do that first mini camp in June, um, you have the rest, I mean, the rest of the summer, but you have, you know, like all of June and then all of July up until we jump in off. There's, we're not doing anything with that. Um, We do have to start at the end of July. We'll do like a four day camp um, here at the school um, to get them ready to go away for band camp, uh, which is, it's a pretty cool experience. And it's kind of like I know Cross does their away camp. Yeah. I don't know if some of the other sports do, um, but it's kind of an immersive experience, right? So yeah. we'll, we'll do that. And then once the season starts, we do practices Tuesdays and Thursdays in the evening. We try to do it after most of the other sports practice so that students can juggle their schedules right um and then we'll do saturdays 
in the morning, like from eight to three, we'll have like a lunch hour. Um, and we do that so that, um, you know, you can have the rest of your, your day. But yeah. then once we have competitions, it's just a competition day. Yeah. What other things do you have coming up like that we can see you at? Of course, like I know you said the Memorial Day, but mm-hmm. what other activities do you have so planned? So outside far? of marching band, um, you know, we're in, in the spring season of all our concert cycles for both band and choir. So the high school bands are going to be performing May 10th and May 11th. Um, our concerts are always 7 p.m. at the high school auditorium. Okay. Um, so those will be great opportunities to come out and see. The concert band, which is our lower band, is going to be performing with the seventh graders. And we try to mix up with the middle schoolers so we can generate that yeah. excitement, right? Um, so we're going to do that on the 10th and the wind ensemble. And the eighth grade band will perform on the 11th at 7 p.m. And then our jazz band, which is another extracurricular group if you you know get into the band scene, yeah. uh, they're going to be performing with um, the sixth graders the next week. So uh-huh. And then our choir has got a concert on May 16th, and that'll be 7 p.m. too. So a lot going on. A lot going on, yeah. 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 We have a lot of concerts. <laughs> There's yeah, a lot of that, groups. Is that yeah. a lot is that a lot to juggle around? Yeah, I mean yeah. but I mean everybody has things to juggle, right? Yeah. It's kind of par for the course. There's mm-hmm. four classes, so you have to have at least four performances, yeah. right? Sometimes you get to put them together, but um, you know, choir has its own identity. We don't want to lessen that identity. We don't want to lessen the band identities, but we split them into those two days to get that that connection with the middle school um it's kind of like recruiting you know like we you know any sport that or any activity that does well like brings them and creates so brings them in early and brings those connections mm-hmm. with it right and you guys have uh you know the football has done a great job of having and the conditioning has done a great job of bringing the younger athletes and and building those relationships with them so that that interest is there and the connections are there so that they move hopefully up to the the highest level right yeah so, Wow. So I do have a question. The yeah. music appreciation class. How long has that been a class? Because w- when I had it last year, when I saw it on my schedule, that was the first time I'd ever seen it. So we run music appreciation right now um, only once per year. Um, okay. So it's second semester each year, typically, um, since marching band has been uh, an offering as a class. Okay. Um, but I think I've, I've, I've pretty much done it since maybe my second year here, second or third year here. Okay. Um, Cause I know we had trimesters before, mm-hmm. um, but we've also, you know, we've done some like independent studies. We've had some students get really into like music technology and actually go to college. Uh, we had two students that went for like music production um, and Miss St. Clair, Mrs. St. Clair. And I kind of like, she had all this great music technology and equipment and people got into like Ableton Live and they were getting into like beat machines and all these, you know, more yeah. music production technology aspects of things. But um, we also have, you know, those types of opportunities for students that, you know, are interested in music, but maybe aren't in the like traditional band or choir sense, or maybe they like both of them. Um, we have a student right now actually going into music composition. So he, he had done music appreciation, then he did choir and then he did band and cause it's just kind of like spiraled, right? Yeah. He got into all this stuff and now he's going into music composition, uh, which is writing music at the college level as an undergrad. So that's pretty cool too. That is really cool. I really enjoyed that class. I'm glad. It was really cool. You guys have any other questions for me? I don't, I definitely learned a lot though. Yeah. That was very informational. Yeah. It has, like, it's just seems so much more than just, like, I feel like band has, like, the stereotypical, like, oh, like, flute, ball, like, Mm -hmm. because I played that in middle school and stuff, but it seems like it's actually more than that. Yeah. And you can do those traditional things. Like, you can have that traditional approach. It, you know, not everybody has to have the exact same experience. Yeah. Right. And I think some students, like you said, like you used to play, you said flute? Yeah. yeah flute at middle school, right? So sometimes things just, things change or your schedule doesn't work out or for whatever reason, like, oh, I didn't do this. And, you know, maybe like that instrument sitting at home. Like, I don't know. Is your flute sitting at home? Did you trade it back in? Yeah, probably, right? <laughs> it's in a closet somewhere, right? And so sometimes they like, you get to like a junior and like, oh man, I kind of wish I had done that or like, I tried yeah. it like. You can I mean, you just jump in, and if if you like it, great. If you don't, 
great. You know, give yourself those opportunities to grow. And you can do that outside of the school setting. You know, like I play in a jazz band. I played in rock funk groups. I played in, you know, I played in a lot of different types of ensembles, some really traditional yeah. play in orchestra and concert bands and stuff. But like there's the rock bands is complete opposite. Right. Um, you know, I've got a I've got a jazz uh, gig coming up at the Capitol Theater in Flint um, with a with a group. Uh, and that's just like outside of my teaching. That's just something that I get to do and perform and for myself and yeah, you know, awesome. and find that kind of fulfillment. Um, so there's there's always opportunities. And, you know, I know Mr. Montague plays in a rock band, right? He's, he's <laughs> yeah. great, right? So there's uh, in, on, on our school board, like there's so many great musicians and people in our community that, that have these musical experiences. You know, most people like music, right? Like yeah. you find some connection at some level to it. Um, so, you know, that's what we want to offer here at the school is some way for you to find the connections with your appreciation of music or love of music or whatever. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's great. All right. Well, you have any questions for us? No, I really appreciate you guys talking with me of today. Of course, this thanks fun. for coming on. I was, I'm not going to lie. I was a little nervous. <laughs> I told yeah. you not to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming. That Thank you. Fun. Appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next week.